This is your season of grace with your host, Patrick Henry Eddett. Get ready for Grace Revolution. Father, I thank you for this glorious opportunity to serve your purpose and to do your work. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for the responsibility and for, the, for trusting me to make me a human face representing you. Thank you for the work of Jesus. Thank you for every soul and for every plan you have. Thank you for patterns that are being rearranged. Thank you for awakening destinies. Thank you for awakening men and women. Thank you for bringing people to the place of salvation and dominion and glory. In the name of Jesus. The first and I think the greatest gift, if not the only gift, that God gave to the man he made in his image and likeness. The man and woman he made into living being, living soul. The first, the greatest, and I think the all he gave to that man was dominion. Dominion. Why? Because the Lord is king. That's what the scripture says from the beginning to the end. The psalm sings about him, the Lord is king, with majesty and rope. So the Lord is dominion. The nature of God is rulership, is kingship, is dominion, lordship. So when we call him Lord, is the only one who deserves to be called Lord. Everyone that is called Lord is in one way or the other taking Lordship from him. And if it is not in alignment with him, he's an idol. God is king. And if he made man in his image and likeness, if we take seriously the scripture, let us make man in our image and likeness. If he molded the man from the dust and breathed into his nostril the, the breath of life and man became a living being, living because of the breath of life, the breath of God, the spirit of God that made him alive. alive. Therefore, man by nature was made to be in dominion. The only way you can survive on earth is to be in charge. The only way you can thrive is to rule. Life is about dominion. If you don't rule, you will be ruled over. The only way you can succeed as a young girl listening to me, the only way you can succeed as a young boy listening to me is that you have to start ruling now, not tomorrow. If you understand me, say, I understand you. God made you to rule. The world will be so hostile and the world would put you under and cover you up and bury you if you don't rule. Right from school, a child that goes to school, if you don't rule, you will be ruled. If you don't excel and stand out, you will go under. So you rule by studies, making great grades, and standing out, and you are celebrated. Excellence is the nature of the real man, because God is excellent. Glory to God. So rulership, above all, we are to awaken this generation into rulership, kingship. That's the plan of God. The reason why Jesus Christ came was to re restore dominion. As I read today, God just opened my eye. And I saw my spiritual eye and I saw something. I don't know whether I will be... The... Let me share with you a few things that I wrote down about dominion. What it means to have dominion. When you hear of Dominic, 
has to do with the king rulership. To live in dominion means to live above things. God created man to live above things. We have been saying this over and over. Just want to awaken in you. Live above things. As a young girl, you live above things. Anything that lives above you is ruling over you. Anything you say, I cannot stop doing it, is ruling you. You have to rule over things. You live above things. So to have dominion means you rule over things. You rule over your emotion. You rule over your feeling. Rule over your action. You choose to do or not to do. Bondage is when you cannot stop doing. Anyone and everyone under the sound of my voice that there is something that you don't want to do and you cannot stop doing. That chain is broken in the name of Jesus. It's true. Somebody is going to walk away from this place with capacity to to choose not to do something. That's dominion. So spiritual dominion, when you come, when you are saved, you come to the place of dominion means you can say, I will not, and you don't. If you say, I will not, and you keep on going back, you are under bondage. You are a slave. You don't have dominion. Even if you are a bishop, a pope, you are in bondage. Many ministers need deliverance. Because the devil attacks ministers. The greatest ministry is ministry to ministers. And you have to begin to pray. God can actually raise people from the church to minister to ministers. Standing in the gap for intercession is a mighty ministry for ministers. When ministers are not protected and not shielded, they are vulnerable. And when a minister is broken, he talks nonsense. He raises broken people. He looks for ways of using the word to package his brokenness. To defend himself. And in the process, he opens the door for weakness. For those who are following him or her. That's why you are urged to pray for your head. Serious believers, they don't talk nonsense about a weak minister. They go on their knees and cry. For the fall of one minister is the fall of thousands of souls. Children in the Lord, they talk nonsense about those who have fallen. Mature people, they take responsibility. They stand, they build a wall. You see, the scripture says in Acts of Apostles at some point that Paul was stoned and he lay con unconscious. Believers joined hands around him surrounded him and raised him back to life if people had not been there for Paul perhaps that would have been the end of the gospel mission in his life but people raised him back raise your tongue and say father in the name of Jesus I receive the grace of standing in the gap in my generation your ministers will not fall into the pit your ministers will not fail Pray that prayer. I say, Lord, I receive the burden to pray for ministers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Be seated. To live in dominion means to live above things. To rule over things. What led me to that is the issue of ruling over weakness. There are many ministers that have too many things to overcome. And if they don't overcome those things, somehow they will filter into the people they lead. That's why I say pray. That's, I think that's what led us to all this. Pray for ministers. Because the body cannot be better than the head. Did you hear me? The body, if you go to any organization, that organization is as strong as the head. Is as sound as the head. Go to any family. That family is as sound as the head of that family. To have dominion is to control, have control over things, to control things. 
to have to live in dominion means to influence things to live in dominion is to shape things shape things to live in dominion is to direct things to live in dominion is to change things kings change things those in dominion they change things to live in dominion is to name things you name things when you name things naming things is deeply spiritual naming things means assigning purpose assigning direction limits to things assigning function assigning the assigning destiny to things it belongs to god to assign destiny so when god has handed over to you as a father to name your children it means you are assigning destiny so if you don't assign a destiny in agreement with the destiny god has given to that person you create conflicts in that child that's why don't don't name a child until you get revelation pray god to lay in you names that come from revelation because a name can be in conflict with destiny because naming is powerful shout hallelujah to rename things the one who names can also rename so these are the works some of the functions of dominion what dominion means to rule dominion means the one who, who dominates a king one in dominion can destroy what is not needed i'm trying to psych you up so that you enjoy dominion the one who enjoys dominion can destroy what is not needed it means something in your life or around your life or your world that you don't need you can destroy it you can destroy friendship that wants to kill you you can destroy a connection that seeks to destroy you one who enjoys dominion can also raise just as you have power to destroy the one who has dominion can also raise so as a person there are things that have to be destroyed there are things that have to be raised and built so as one in dominion you can build certain things and destroy certain things shout hallelujah one in dominion can bring certain things down and can also raise certain things according to need you can build up you can bring down look at jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 7 to 10 jeremiah chapter 1 from verse 7 to 10 he said but the lord said to me do not say i am only a child and i want to tell somebody who's sitting down here a young person do not say i'm only a child you must go to everyone i send you to and say whatever i command you do not be afraid of them for i am with you and i will rescue you and declares uh, declares the lord i am with you means i am your dominion and we have said it, that dominion since god is dominion it is only in god that you have now you don't understand it's only in god that you have dominion because god is dominion god does not have dominion god is dominion so it is only in god that you have dominion so god is telling jeremiah when you are with me you are a ruler when you are associated with me you rule you cannot be associated with god and be a beggar certain things believers certain prayers of believer useless prayer too much of mbok, 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 mbok. that's not a prayer of a believer a son does not spend the whole night begging the father for food the son asks the father The son has a right he knows what belongs to him when the son is begging the whole night means the son had walked away from the place of sonship the son had broken principle of sonship principle of relationship and connection with the father so he's now begging for mercy children don't believe you are poor does your daughter know you are poor 
you know how much you have in the account your son doesn't care to know don't tell by the way don't go and tell your daughter how much you have in account that's how god wants us to live with him we know that he has everything so you're going to be in alignment with him be in righteousness with him and when you're in righteousness with him you don't spend the whole night shut up nonsense believers you ask and believe when you have asked believe you have received and what you have asked shall come to you shout hallelujah so there is confidence and boldness let's go to that scripture when you are with god you don't beg you have dominion kings don't beg it is not in the nature of kings to beg am i talking to somebody it's not in the nature of kings to beg you one king may be richer than another they sit down on the table and talk king to king with honor and respect so god is giving jeremiah confidence as a child of god you need to have you need to know who you are the kind of confidence because the devil does not respect your christian name not even your speaking in tongue he respects the kind of confidence and boldness that powers you get out from my son get out of my way in the name of jesus and you move about doing what you should do when it comes up against i bind you and i cast you out and i close the door against you no make up send down which is and which are they respond to you according to the level of confidence and boldness you enjoy they know confident believers they know those who don't know their rights so god is telling jeremiah you may be young but what you carry is god tell somebody you may be young in your eyes but as a believer what you carry is god so what i carry is not a thing i don't carry dollars i don't carry yen or europe i carry god so my confidence is not equal to dollars it's equal to god if he will not protect me that is his issue but me at boost knowing that he is my protector look at this thing for i am with you and i will rescue you declares the lord go to the next verse then the lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me now i have put my words in your mouth the word of god is powerful the word of god is powerful use the word of god to break through when you have the word of god in your mouth don't surrender because there is a way out tell seven people with the word of god there is a way out there is a way out there is a way out don't surrender glory to god hallelujah yep the word of god in your mouth look at the next verse he says, see today i appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot say dominion and tear down say dominion to destroy say dominion overthrow say dominion to build say dominion and to plant say dominion that's dominion that's it to uproot that means as somebody who lives in dominion who enjoys dominion there are things you uproot there are things you tear down no matter for how long they have been there you bring them down and they res resist you he says a lie you to destroy there are things to be destroyed are there things to be destroyed in the family line they have been waiting for a man of dominion to rise nothing can change in your family line until a king is born don't let anybody lie to you concerning assignment assignment can never change a family line it complicates it every problem in the family line is waiting for a king to be born why because issues like marriages that don't work in family line there are things to be torn down and they want to tear it down is a king who enjoys dominion it is not a man from a stranger who come and tear it down for you you are the one to tear it down that's what people try to deceive you that i woke up and i'm fasting or not 
He said, sorry, since you cannot fast and pray, bring 20,000 naira, we will pray and fast for you. You know? <laughs> That's not how it works. Jesus Christ did not call 20, 20, 20 disciples to fast. So that instead of fasting for 40 days, they divided it to two, two, two. So he fasted two days. Another disciple, he fasted 40 days. That was his destiny. Your fasting is your fasting. Your own, Afubinam. Anybody who tells you, yeah, I know a cock, yeah, I am. Mm, so, you know. So when the scripture says there are things to tear down, it means there are some structures that are standing when people want to break through. The structure stands against them. It is waiting for a king to be born. Somebody with dominion to tear it down. And like Jeremiah, God is looking for somebody that is saying, I put the word in your mouth. That same Jeremiah is the one that God spoke through. And my words not like fire and hammer that shatters the rock. The word of God wake up every night, every morning. Keep speaking. Come in cover as the tiny call sing this song. As a young girl, as a man beginning to have children, you, you wake up and use the word like hammer and break into the life of your children. Ah, every time they bring a child to me, I begin to speak the word of God. Children listen. Sometimes they begin to smile. I have spoken a child that was agitated by the time you finish speaking the child goes to bed a one year old I mean one day old child relates with the word of God I have seen a lot of things some a child that is just barely one or two days cannot open the eye as you begin to speak the word of God to bless the child I tell you will open the eye because the word of God affects every spirit so when you have the world, every war has been waiting for you. A king that has what it takes to destroy. It takes a king to destroy. So when you assume your governorship in God, the things that bothered, that stopped your father from getting married, because so many people, three generations, so we can in Amdo, so three generations of no marriage it means there is a wall to be torn down it takes a man a young woman who has the word of god in his mouth in her mouth to peel it down so that scripture says i've given you appointed you i want to tell you there is an appointment of god over your life and the appointment is to destroy pull down things and build new things when you say in the family uh, everybody's poor i have no uncle to save to help me to pay my bill you were born to be the first rich person that means build wealth and stop complaining you have nobody to pay your bill now build your wealth so that you can pay the bills of others the reason is because i've come to know I had no uncle to help me. Now I have to help somebody. I have to change the history. I have to change it. I don't have to be extra wealthy to change it. I just have to start changing it. You have to start doing something. Stand up there, 20 people. Start doing something. Start doing something. Stop complaining. Nobody could help me. Now start helping somebody. Start changing because the family has been waiting for a king, a queen to be born. And if you are here, who else are you looking for? You are already here. Or you want to die? Then go ahead and be the king. Go ahead and be the queen. Tear down things. Build things. Tell somebody, don't worry, we will take care of stuff. We'll put your phone. No, I'm telling you, the, the kind of people that are also crying. Yeah. Just And you're not just talking nonsense. At midnight, you are praying. 
you are doing something you are humbling yourself you are speaking the word boy i'm sharing with you what i know if you don't believe you can go and look for something else that's dominion it's an appointment of god and if you don't have god you don't have it the whole issue of the temptation in the garden was to deny man of that greatest gift of god dominion from that moment man became a weakly a pitiable man a pitiable woman i don't believe in pity don't believe in pity i don't a man who knew about my resignation at some point we discussed and we talked about it. so each time you see me he said i pity you how are you going to survive i cut off from him how can you pity me if you are a child of god and you know i'm a man of god i preach the gospel and you say i pity you that means you don't know who i am you don't deserve to have me in your connection in your circle can you pity a man who carries the word of god i have, I have spoken the word of god and a barren person has a child I have spoken the word of God, a sick man rises and lives. I have spoken the word of God, a poor man rises and becomes wealthy. And then you tell me that I carry the word that you pity me. That means you don't know me and you don't deserve me. You cannot pity any child of God. So if you have been looking for pity, Pele, no pity for you. Rise and be something. Praise God. Now let me share something with you, something very fundamental. The purpose of Jesus on earth was to bring back dominion to man what the devil stole from man was dominion as a result of which pattern of failure because when marriage fails in the life of a man and children begin to experience failure in marriage it means dominion is i mean lack of dominion failure is being transferred from one generation to another somebody died young in the other generation another generation people die young then another generation i mean there is a transfer what is it that the devil is using to do that so jesus came to restore that purpose that 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 power of dominion jesus came to bring dominion why because god is the dominion and when god is a man man lives in dominion so jesus the word the god that was from the very beginning before the beginning was the word of god and that word was with god and was god he came and dwelt amongst us he took flesh so that flesh a man in flesh can now have dominion so jesus christ came for one purpose bam, dominion when you saw jesus he saw a sick man he risked a sick man back to life dominion a sinner condemned jesus forgave a sinner dominion in the time of jesus religious holy people use their holiness to condemn people jesus used his own holiness to set people free why because he wanted the sinner to come back to dominion he wanted the lame man to come back to dominion he wanted the blind man to come back to dominion he came to restore glory back to man because dominion is glory kingship is glory his power his influence lepers were those who lost dominion in the city and they were living in the outskirts in in the forest he brought back lepers he brought them back cleanse so jesus came to restore dominion he preached the gospel to set people free to restore people but jesus had to deal with one thing the same deceiver the enemy that same deceiver the devil hmm, he will lead jesus the devil went to jesus and told him if you are the son of god <laughs> if you are the son of god look at matthew chapter 4 the last temptation of jesus verse 8 again the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world <laughs> say kingdom all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor is the devil was displaying dominion and that's the same thing the devil presented to adam and eve 
he showed him kingdoms of the world and their splendor the next verse he said all this i will give you he said if you will bow down and do what and worship me do you know what he was attacking he was attacking dominion he knew jesus christ came to give man dominion so that the devil can be under man once and for all but he now attacked the one who was bringing the dominion he said you fall under my dominion what did jesus christ say look at the next verse jesus said to him away from me satan for it is written worship the lord your god and serve him alone praise god if jesus had in any way compromised with the devil forever humanity would be under the dominion of satan the devil was trying to steal the mantle of dominion from jesus so that you will not have dominion till today the devil is trying to steal dominion from the preacher many preachers who are now worshiping satan directly or indirectly by doing that they deny the believer the people who, who follow them they cannot have spiritual dominion because they cannot be taught the truth the devil knows when you capture the head the body will go but jesus did successfully what adam and eve could not do adam and eve could not resist him but he resisted him say get out dominion belongs to god that's what that response means you worship him alone why because dominion belongs to who god praise god shout hallelujah revelation chapter 1 verse 5 to 6 reading from new king james version it says and from jesus christ the faithful witness the firstborn from the dead and the ruler over the kings of the earth to him who loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood and has made us kings shall kings he has made us kings and priests to his god and father to him be glory and dominion forever and ever shout amen, amen. because jesus succeeded in resisting the devil now he succeeded he succeeded in resisting the devil therefore he succeeded in raising kings have you ever been told that being a child of god is being a king there are some people when they hear us say about that was one of the greatest problem i had among the young among catholics whether priests and lay people people just feel you're boastful you're proud you're boastful how can you be a king in god and be talking like a weakling what madness have I ever told you my father bought a private jet? I told you God can do all things, and that's true. I'm a king, I don't beg. I decree things. Shout hallelujah. Look at that same Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. Revelation chapter 5, verses 9 and 10. And they sang a new song saying you are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals for you were slain and have redeemed us to god by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nation and have made us kings and priests to our god and stand up and read that one and and Tell three people and we shall reign on the earth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Keep on standing there. What does it mean to reign? I have told you. Part of what it means to reign is to tear down things. That means you are saying we shall tear down things on the earth. Things that should no longer be there in family. Now you know what it means. So the whole issues of what was wrong with the ancestors you cannot hold them accountable now now this is your generation when your great-grandfather sacrificed to demons and when they buried young women alive and sold people into slavery when they killed young men in their prime and they and they shouted nobody will live long and all those things they didn't hear the gospel 
they were not kings in Christ now you are a child of God now you are a king and Jeremiah was told you are to tear down there are things that have been done ancestral covenant it was waiting for a king and a priest to be born and you are a king and you are a priest am I talking to somebody now you know you were born for a purpose so if there is a problem in the family don't run you were born for that reason Esther was told who knows whether it was for a time like this so you are an opportunity now welcome to the gospel of the kingdom the gospel that does not permit weakness I'm not here to place responsibility on you if you don't succeed it is your responsibility it is your problem because you are a king as a king you have to reign what have you been doing it is now time to reign you are a priest what do priests do they offer sacrifices they ask God for mercy so as a priest it is your responsibility to wake up and offer worship unto God offer the blood of Jesus Christ unto God he said father for every ancestral covenant that is rising and speaking negativity I stand as a priest in this family only the blood of Jesus Christ will speak this way only every day I kept holy days for my family and for my destiny every Monday I will speak into the whole way every first day of the month I will fast and wait on the Lord and speak over what will happen the scripture says you've made us priests and king priests offer worship priests offer sacrifices priests offer unto God and beg for mercy so it is your work to stand and beg for mercy concerning things people did in the past and nobody repented about that is your work that is the purpose of midnight prayer that is the purpose of covenant time everybody should have a personal covenant time that when that time comes your spirit comes alive and you go and sit down it's not about asking God to give you a car and that and that and that and that there are things to be torn down there are things to be broken there are things to be built marriages that have never succeeded you start building in the presence of God before you ever have a child you have built successfully the marriage of your child before your children know what it means to be in to know a woman you have already built they will never marry wrong people if there is a tendency in your family good people go and marry Usme they bring Usme into the family and have problem you build a new wall onto your children and speak to them right from the womb you will not love a wrong person you will not connect the wrong person and from the first day the child comes you may think the child doesn't know speak into the hearing you don't know what is wrong you don't love what is wrong you don't know you speak until the child grows up into that that means you are built it's a responsibility it's not the work of some anointed prophets in church anointed prophet in church to inspire you to be the priest and to be the king i cannot do your fasting i fast for you i've been on fasting i will keep on fasting for you i'm praying for you but you must do your own fasting you must do your own prayer you must have your own covenant time you must have the god that i serve as your god it's not coming to tell me let your god answer what what about your god you see that so as a king why have you not been ruling a lot of reasons why people don't rule because they they love sin pleasure evil seduction the devil tempted jesus with seduction and every day young men are being told the glamour of sin is of sex sex young women are being destroyed in their destiny the glamour of sex if as a young man you begin to enjoy sex and to settle down you have sold your future sex is for settled people when a man is married he's a settled man it means he has a life he can start living when you are beginning life and all you look for is to look for a woman look for a man you have sold your future it's a time to build that's the seduction the devil was bringing to jesus every man every woman at the beginning of your life that's when temptation comes temptation does not come to old men most of them they have finished their destiny temptation comes to young people because the early time is a time when destinies are destroyed or made so if as a young girl here and boys everywhere married men unmarried men they are following you and think you are lucky you are hot you are not hot you are dead no 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 
any young man you are sitting down here you are proud people are buying you phone buying you what you don't deserve and you say what well, everywhere i go that's how they follow me they follow you because they want to bury you you don't have a future they are taking your future and giving you to eat as a car now taking your future giving you to carry as phone and you wake up into tomorrow confused absolutely so you cannot sit down there and feel good everywhere i go to that's how they follow me i go out with my friend nobody talks to my friend they are talking to me because they want to bury you before your time how can you be proud of early burial can you imagine you are king you are a priest you sacrifice glory to god to raise a new generation a new generation of people who will live in dominion and change ancient ancestral patterns jesus himself had to do what adam could not do he reigned he prevailed against the devil and by that he made you and i a priest and kings now let me tell you a few things when you accept jesus christ as lord and savior you are born again of water and the spirit that's the beginning so when you're born again of water and spirit that's the beginning of the battle that means you are a king the greatest victory is not about the devil first so that's what i wanted to tell all this one i've been telling you is not what i wanted to tell you this is what i wanted to tell you now listen it's true so that you will know this is what i wanted to tell you i was just preparing you for this when you're born again is the beginning the beginning of dominion but let me tell you where dominion begins dominion begins with yourself dominion begins with you ruling over yourself in god ruling over your flesh the devil needs the help of the flesh to destroy you the devil used the help of the flesh of if to destroy if pleasure the pleasure of the flesh the devil was looking for the pleasure of the flesh to use to destroy jesus the flesh is the greatest accomplice the one who helps satan more than any other thing witches and wizards are not as dangerous as the flesh did you hear what i just said i say witches and wizards they are not as dangerous enemies as your flesh so the first place of dominion as a preacher i have not started i've not started preaching if i don't have dominion over my life i have not started if i say i'm coming to cast out demon from you and i cannot rule over my own flesh and rule over my life i will die young in the process of casting out the demon and if you say i want to go and cast out an ancestral spirit because they are troubling me i go to the village to pull down things and you have not yet ruled over the flesh you pull down things and come back pull down many people have done and done family deliverance and they died early because they were not properly guided if you understand me let me see your hand oh. here we are committed to teaching the whole truth many people have tried what they call family deliverance and they never rose up they never woke up and they never survived why they did things they were not equipped to challenge because they have not yet been able to establish dominion the first level of dominion is not the dominion over the devil that's not the first level is the dominion over the flesh because this is your flesh that can help the devil to destroy you look at scripture galatians chapter 5 galatians chapter 5 verse 19 to 21 now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery fornication let's read it together now let's start from adultery one to go <laughs> adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies outburst of wrath 
selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy. Read it out now. Start from envy. Envy. Say that again. Envy. Go on. Murders. Drunkenness. Reveries. And the like. The like means there are other things. Oh, so that you will not say. This is all. Oh, other things can be endless. Pornography. Useless things that we watch on phone. Endless. They talked about lewd, lewdness. Lewdness. There are ladies that if the skirt is not so short that if you sit down, somebody who doesn't know whether to look up or down. Lewd, lewdness. Sorry. I'm not saying you shouldn't wear it again. I'm just talking about lewdness. Yeah. Some people they have top, but their top is that when you sit close to them, would you all get there? They be say, maybe say young, maybe say song. So you sit uncomfortable throughout the service. Lewdness. It means they invite you to a dinner of death by their physical appearance. They go deeper, 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 deeper. Absolutely, that's the flesh, and the devil doesn't have problem. The modern day church, there's no problem. But the point is that those are people who cannot change patterns. <laughs> Envy, anger, bitterness, hate that means the first dominion of the king. Is to rule over the scripture says in Proverbs, it is better to rule over your passion to have self control than to take a city. That means the first place you rule over is not a city, it's not ancestral line, it is your flesh ruling over the tendency to fornicate, the tendency to commit adultery, the desire for envy. The desire for all uncleanness. When you don't kill those ones and you say you are going to the devil, the devil doesn't need to kill you. You are already in trouble. Ancestral, ancestral pattern will say we have enlisted you. You are an agent. Which means in your lifetime we will continue our dynasty, our rulership. That is why we see many Christians but they resemble the ancestors. Can I see four young men? Four young men, please. Four young men and two women, please. Kia, 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 kia. Volunteer, volunteer, volunteer. You stand. Face this way. No, just face here. You come. Who's taller between two of you? Mm. You follow. You follow. You come. Behind. You standing there. Beautiful. So let's assume these are generations. Huh? This is a gen these are generations. Let's assume um, what do they have in common? Black shoes. <laughs> That's it. So let's assume a generational problem. Is black shoes. Can you see all of them? All the four, the first four, they have black shoes. Okay, so that's it. That means this one, black shoe, handed over to this one. This is the generation, let's say 100 years ago or 200 years ago, handed over to this one, black shoes. That means even though she wears glasses, she still has the black shoe. The difference is in the style of a hair, and hair does not change somebody's life. Black shoes. This one happens to wear short sleeve, but black shoes. It means what affected this one has a right to affect this one because it is looking for a pattern. 
what is the pattern black shoes this one though you wear short it means you walk with white people missionary but you wear black shoe it means what affected your father you are already carrying it even though you are a missionary follower you have what black shoes ancestral pattern this one okay now you have graduated your father used to wear short sleeve wait the only difference between this one and the father is long sleeve but look at what black shoes which means whatever had permission to destroy the father has permission to do what which means the next generation that changes is not just about the shirt it's about the shoes this one has what brown shoes which means when the ancestral spirit that has been enforcing ancestral pattern destroying people delaying people when they waste up to this point and they come to this man they say wear black shoes say, i will not wear black shoes that's it he says it's a lie you both forgot oh yeah wear black shoe i think i mean i mean no power but get me you wear black shoe it can be like as a young man don't know we me able no 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 one let me zone the other one that means i'm not wearing any black shoe and that means i bring you to go black shoe it's a lie i'm wearing brown shoe for the word of god says it is not by it is not man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that comes from the mouth of the eventually this one may still be troubled because something close is still trying to change him but now he has gotten this man you see this man is fairer and taller And this man is not wearing black shoe he's wearing brown shoe deeper brown shoe i mean this one was lighter this one say i go further i go further in brown shoe so if you look at this man wearing long sleeve wearing good black shoe, brown shoe with bed and with fair face it means let me tell you something one generation must start to resist even though troubles come even though adversity comes, you see, the person that will take over from you cannot be like you, it will be better. Eventually, the one that this man will give birth to is a different kind of man. He does not even know about black shoe this is the man who knew about black shoe who was resisting black shoe but this man only knows brown shoe he only knows jesus so jesus is now his culture jesus now is his pattern now from this man a new ancestry has started with this man the ancestry is becoming better from this man things become better better and better except there is any man who now falls under the trap of the devil to go back and begin to take black shoe to wear and then the devil will begin to hand over black shoe again that is how it works now for this man to say no way to black shoe it means he, he, he knows he's a king he fights he fights against the tendency in him to live like the father to hate like the father to be a drunk like a father by the time you correct all those things you are doing the greatest warfare go back god bless you put your hands together now the last scripture romans chapter 8 romans chapter 8 verses 12 and 13. romans chapter 8 verses therefore brethren we are debtors not to the flesh to live according to the flesh the next verse for if you live according to the flesh you will do what you will die go back to genesis chapter 3 or chapter 2 god said any day you do it you will do what 
you will die means dominion will leave you glory will leave you you have shame prosperity will leave you you have poverty freedom will leave you you have bondage death is not here a physical death is a spiritual death kavod living living behind ikabot is if you live by the flesh which means as you are sitting down here if all that you do is to live by the flesh you are dead even though you are a worship leader even as evangelists you are dead as a pastor as a bishop if you live according to the flesh you are dead that is why when dead ministers carry microphone they distribute death to people because kind begets kind for if you live according to the flesh you will die but if by the spirit you do what let's read it together but if you want to go but if by the spirit you put to death you did you hear that if you put to death means you are to tear it down that envy that is the root of witchcraft let me tell you every family that has problem of witchcraft one basic thing you will see in that family there is envy envy is an is a character trait in a family of witchcraft lust is a character trait in a family of marine spirit people in families that have ancestral roots of marine one basic trait about them lost tendency to sleep with men and women multiplied tendency to sleep early they cannot wait and they have a tendency people can easily abuse them because there is an attraction something pulls people to them so they abuse them children of that kind of level they abuse before they they know their innocence so that means as a child of god you need the revelation of the word of god to discern what is the controlling influence where you come from this is deliverance absolutely the scriptures say put to death put to death everything of the flesh which means your work as a believer once you are born again the first assignment you have is to study the word apply the word to cancel out everything of the flesh because the devil will use everything of the flesh to transfer the problem of your father to you your father was a witch or a wizard sorry a wizard or your mother may have been a, a witch and they did terrible things and their trouble are looking for the next generation you have not yet been initiated but there is envy working in your heart in your visit, you, you feel so bad when somebody succeeds a door is open the punishment of the witchcraft of your father is already coming upon you so you look at a generation of men who have children if you see a, a number of young men who live with men with women in their house and they don't have they don't have children they, they are not married they have children some of them they live with this woman five years three years they are tired they see a new one and they look for one fault throw that one away and bring in another one they form they may have two three four eventually they may marry but they have already left a portion when children grow up the first thing you will see in those children is that they start sleeping with people before they know what happens the character of lust irresponsibility no self-control and except there is a generation somebody who rises up is it like unlike my father until i'm ready i'm not ready unlike my mother until i'm ready i'm not ready not just that you kill so your first dominion as a child of god is in that galatian is in dominion over that stuff the work of the flesh by killing using the spirit to kill which means you may have lost but you use the word of god in the holy ghost you war against yourself you spirit of loss in the name of jesus i come against you you pray in tongues you are fasting you are working over one year loss has died you are facing other things in two three four years you are a different kind of thing you begin to have a different result now the problem we have in christianity we are no longer dealing with those things issues of the flesh are acceptable my pastor know i'm dating her so lost is on the altar god is not honored marriage is not pure the marital bed is not to be revered it's not pure 
Relationship is not to be pure. So people in different workforce, I'm a, I'm a worker in church. He said, I've been dating this woman for 10 years now. I said, wait, she's also a worker in my church. <laughs> worker versus worker. And the devil is dancing, dancing in between two workers. And church is going on like a train. And because of that delay, he's still delaying somebody. Because of that weakness, he's still weakening somebody. Ancestral patterns continue from one generation to another. But preachers are preaching, speaking in tongues going on. It's a lie. A king must reign. And the king begins with the self. This program is sponsored by the Covenant Friends and Partners of Grace Family Global Outreach. You can be part of this grace revolution by becoming a covenant partner today. Allow God to use you. Our account details are as follows. Bank, Zenith Bank. Account name, Grace Family Global Outreach. Account number, 101 42 for inquiries, please call 081-804-33225 or 090-738-38742. To all our covenant partners and friends, we say thank you. Like the widow of Zarephath, your oil will never run dry. To order for the books, messages, and other resource materials, please call or send an SMS to 080-660-46346 or 081-804-33225. Videos are also available on YouTube at www.youtube.com forward slash Grace Family Outreach. To stay connected, like us on Facebook at Grace Family Outreach. Or visit our website at www.gracecommission.org.